Okay, good morning, guys. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and open up to Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21. Last couple of weeks, we had been in chapter 20, which seems to make sense, right? 20 comes before 21 still, I believe. Um, so just um, we are coming towards the end, right, of our timeline that we started building out in the beginning of this eschatology study quite some time ago. And so, you know, we have come through Old Testament passages and talking about the day of the Lord, signs of the day of the Lord, the abomination of desolation, right, all these, this terminology. Uh, I expect us at this point to understand what those things mean. And, uh, and I think you guys uh, do know that. I'm, I'm very confident in that. And so uh, those are the big markers that we want to remember. Remember the big moments, the big things. We don't get caught up in the weeds and caught up in the little things of, uh, you know, what might be speculation and that things can be uh, certainly have different opinions and thoughts on. And even to that point, uh, things like the first resurrection. Uh, we know in the church are are looked and viewed upon differently. But the way we see it is that, remember, it will come after the sign of the sun, moon, and stars because that's what the scriptures tell us. And Jesus says that those signs will come after the tribulation of those days, which will come after the abomination of desolation. So there's our, our chronology. There's our timeline. So we are to be looking for some signs. Then we fast forward through God's pouring out of his wrath and the seven trumpets and the vials. And all that culminates, remember, in the end of the 70th week of Daniel with the Battle of Armageddon, uh, which we saw there in chapter um, 19, and also the wedding supper of the Lamb. And then when we got into chapter 20, we saw uh, the thousand years, right? We looked at the millennial reign of Christ and the thousand years that Christ will be on the earth. And all the saints, and remember the blessing, the blessing that comes from all those who are a part of the first resurrection is that they will be ruling and reigning with Christ for a thousand years. Okay, and so we will forever be with him uh, after the first resurrection at the day of the Lord. So we came through looking at that thousand years. We saw how Satan is bound for a thousand years. Christ will rule for a thousand years. After the thousand years, remember, Satan has to be loosed for a short amount of time. And he will then again mount up all the non-believers to go and to fight against Christ. Uh, and it says that fire will come from heaven and will consume them. And then uh, Satan, remember, will be cast into the lake of fire, where the Antichrist and the false prophet already were cast. Uh, and then it says, remember, hell and, uh, or Hades, right, and death will be thrown into the lake of fire. And that was, remember, at the second resurrection, which is after the thousand years, and we call that perhaps the great white throne judgment. And that's the second resurrection, when all the dead then of the, all the non-believers come before the Lord, and also we believe believers will be there as they will need to receive you know, their glorified bodies. Believers from the first resurrection up to that time uh, will need to receive still their glorified bodies. So all, all will be judged. All will be before the throne of God, right, is what we've seen. And uh, thankfully, our, those of us who our names are written in the book of life will not be judged by our deeds for salvation. Right? Praise the Lord and amen and hallelujah. That should get many amens. I will not be judged for salvation based on my deeds, but rather on the merits of the work that Jesus Christ has done. Right? And that he has imputed his righteousness to me and to you if you are in Christ. And so, praise the Lord, you are saved on that. But there will certainly be rewards and, and judgment that will be had on believers also um, in, in that respect and in that regard. Okay? So, um, that's where we're at. We end chapter 20 with seeing uh, death, hell, Satan, false prophet, antichrist, all non-believers are now in the lake of fire, which is that final hell, that final resting place for all the unsaved. Now, as we get into chapter 21, we transition into where will be all the believers and all the saints will be for the rest of all eternity, and that is the new heaven, new earth. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Uh, verse 1 of chapter 21. It says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man, and he will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this down, for these words are faithful and true, or trustworthy and true. Verse 6. 
And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of water of life without payment. The one who conquers or the one who overcomes will have this heritage, and I will be his God and he will be my son. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for murderers, the sexual immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. Let's stop there. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this text. Thank you so much for the amazing gift of your word. Thank you so much for your amazing love that you have given to us, that you have granted to us the gift of repentance and faith and life that we have in, in Jesus Christ. And thank you for uh, the sanctification process that you continue in us uh, by the power of your spirit and through the truth of your word. And it is in Jesus' name we pray and we ask for your direction and understanding today. Amen. Amen. Okay, so um, John sees this new heaven and new earth <clears throat> because the first one or this old one and I say this old one because that's the one we're currently in, right, uh, is, is passed away. So we are, uh, we are on this model that is going to be an old model, and there's going to be a new one um, that is coming to us. <clears throat> and uh, think about back to Genesis as we're preaching through the book of Genesis now. Um, fitting, you know, that we're going through the bookends uh, at the same time, and, and I've done that in years past, actually. We did a study in men's Bible study of Genesis, then we did eschatology. Uh, and there's just so much in those bookends of parallel and things that, that you know, go together and, and unpack and give us more understanding. But here, if you view this as a new creation, right, this is God creating again. Uh, just like he did as Jesus spoke things into existence, um, you know, certainly in a different manner. We're already existing. We're there in glorified bodies and all those things. But here comes this new creation that he has for us now as we are new creations, right? As I say that new creation... That should be maybe ringing, ringing bells in your, in your brain. And uh, if you don't have that memorized, it's definitely a good bucket list verse. That's 2 Corinthians 5, uh, verse 17, talking about how if anyone is in Christ, uh, he is a new creation, right? That the old things are gone, and behold, the new, or, or the new things are coming, and the old things have gone. And so there's this change where, you know, we put off the old man and we put on the new man because God has made us a new man. So uh, there's this new creation now for us who are new creatures and new creations in Christ. And so as we are going to be glorified and, and in the glory of Jesus' presence and God's presence forever, we now will have this new uh, place to be with him and exist with him forever, which is an awesome thing. Mm -hmm. First thing we see, uh, you know, is that it says the sea was no more. It ends in verse 1 there. So uh, I don't know whether or not to tell you as I look at you boys, Galen and, and Sky and, and uh, Adam and, and Brian and all you guys that love the sea so much, I don't know. Again, some of those things we can't really be dogmatic about. Does, it, does that mean there's no water? I would say no, because we will see later that there's a, a river of the water of life um, that will be in the city with the tree of life and those kinds of things. Does it mean that there won't be oceans and seas? Perhaps that's what it means. Uh, remember we saw how um, earlier that the seas was told as, as, and given as analogy or imagery of people groups, mm -hmm. of peoples. Um, if you remember that, that it said the, uh, the woman and the beast. Remember it said the woman is on the seas, and he tells us later that the seas is talking about the people groups and multitudes of people. Uh, so some people would think that it means that. And so I just give you a couple options to say it's not clear. We don't really know. But also to say again, remember, it's not that important. Right? If, if, if God wanted us to know the exact detail of that, he would tell it to us more clearly. And so, yes, sir? I've already come to terms with that, and we're going to have to talk about it when we're going through this. Because honey, hopefully there will be lakes with fresh water. <laughs> <laughs> Amen, Amen, brother. Yep, we just don't know. We do know there will be food there, because we'll see as we get into chapter 20 and 21 later. Uh, there's fruit that is, that is grown every month on the tree of life. And so Jesus said... You know, I will drink of the fruit anew with you. Um, you know, we saw that Jesus ate his glorified body. So who knows if maybe we'll be eating fish or, uh, you know, it's speculation. And so it's fun to talk about, uh, but we just don't really know. But the point is, it's a new creation. This is a new heaven. It's a new earth. Uh, it's a different universe, right? This is God creating another universe. And now, you know, he's going to reveal to us in these next two chapters what some of those things look like. Okay. That, yes, sir. <clears throat> Does it say anywhere, like, okay, after the new heaven and a new earth, is there still non-believers that come along after that? No. No. So, great question. 
because the it's not that humans are going to be continue to be born and continue to be in sin. This is the end. And actually, we saw that, right? It is done, he said. It is done, meaning what is done? Everything's done. The, the, the complete sense. work of the redemption of mankind is over through Jesus Christ. This is now the two groups we always talk about. There's two final homes for them, and now they're separated, and they're in those homes forever. Uh, we don't see anywhere revealed to us that he's starting this whole thing over again. <laughs> um, you know, it might make for a cool movie or something, but I don't believe that, as we don't see that um, in the scriptures. No, I believe everyone now uh, in heaven is in the presence of God without sin, and I believe that because we're going to see it tells sin, us that's all this. The main thing, yeah, yeah. That's right. Uh, flip back to Isaiah 65, if you would, please. Let's go back Old Testament. Mm-hmm. Isaiah 65. All right. <clears throat> meet me there, beat me there. Right? That's, that's what we're going to go with. Meet me there, beat me there. Isaiah 65, 17. He says, For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered or come into mind. Uh, verse 18, I'm going to keep going. It says, But be glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem to be a joy and her people to be a gladness. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and be glad in my people. No more shall be heard in the sound of weeping and crying and distress. Okay, we can, we can stop there. But you can see, obviously, the parallels of what's happening here. So that's... You know, the prophet Isaiah, uh, some 700 years or so before Christ being born, being told and being revealed to by God this vision or this uh, direction that God is going, and this, this new heaven, this new earth, and even the next couple of verses as I read there, we'll see this new Jerusalem is, is what we're going to see this is referred to and called, okay, this heavenly Jerusalem. Uh, for the sake of time, we won't turn to the other scriptures up there, but we got Matthew 24, 35, which, remember, Matthew 24 is what? What do we call that? What do we refer to that? Uh, Sermon on the Mount. Close, <laughs> Sermon on the Mount. See, I got him hooked on that, James. I tricked him right with that. Sermon on the Mount is a great one and a good answer, but this is a Sermon on a Mount, but which one? Olive. Good, on the Mount of Olives. So this is called the Olivet Discourse. So in the Olivet Discourse there where he's talking about the end times and the day of the Lord, he says that the heavens and the earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Okay, so the heavens and the earth that we currently have here will melt away. And that's what the Second Peter 3 uh, reference is there too, as Peter talks about that, if you recall from us preaching through Second Peter, about how the earth will dissolve with fervent heat. Okay, and, a, and a great heat will, desert, will dissolve this, this earth. Okay? So, interesting here that you know, in this new heaven and new earth, God dwells with his people. And, and wasn't that how it was in the beginning of creation? Mm-hmm. Right? As, as we see God walking in, and, and so I believe we have evidence clear enough to say that I would say we, it's Jesus walking in the garden uh, you know, with Adam and Eve and, and, uh, and having fellowship with them and talking to them you know, directly face to face which we know after chapter 3 changed, right? As, as we see him calling out, Adam, where are you? You know, and he's hiding. And, and then it changes from, from that point on and on how God chose to speak to, to people, to his people, and revealing through visions and dreams of the prophets and then through the apostles and then eventually through the word of God. So, um, you know, things have, have changed and been different, but here we get to dwell again now with God. And, and essentially, think about it, guys. Isn't that the whole plan? The plan of the book and the, the theme of the book and the main character of the book, Jesus, and the plan is what? To redeem a people that God has given him. The Father has given the Son a people. The Son has given himself as the propitiation to save that people, and he redeems them. And so that now that uh, alienation, right, that was there is now reconciliation. And, and now we're back together with God, right? And we have that to a degree here, yes? but we're still in this flesh and we're not in his presence. However, because we're saved and because we're redeemed, we will one day be in his presence. Um, so praise God for that. And that's, that's kind of the work we see here. And so we see as it's finished, we are again brought into harmony with our creator and we will have a, a relationship with him for all of eternity. And that's an awesome, glorious mm-hmm. thing. No more death. Right? Mm-hmm. Remember death, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, uh, it says, Paul says that death is swallowed up in victory, right? Where's your sting 
Um, you know, where where is your sting, O death? Because it's been swallowed up, and it says the last enemy defeated is death. Death is defeated, it's conquered. As he says, it's done, it's all over. There's no more death. So that's where I was going with that, Sky. There's no more death. There's no more of that. There's no more tears. It says there's no more mourning. There's no more crying, uh, for the former things have passed away. So no more birth either. Good. I don't believe so. No, I don't believe so. We don't see, we don't see, and in fact, I would say no, personally, dogmatically, because, you know, we see that there aren't those relationships in heaven. Um, Jesus even refers to that when he talks about the angels and saying that when you are in heaven, you will be like the angels in heaven. Uh, meaning, and the question there was posed by the religious leaders to say, remember the, uh, the wife who didn't have a baby with her husband, and then she was given to the seven brothers, and they never had a baby in the resurrection. Whose wife will she be? They're trying to trip him up. And he says, you guys don't know anything about the ways of God. You know what you're talking about. Because he says it won't be like that in heaven. Uh, they, they won't be like that. They won't be married like that. So uh, in our flesh, that can seem like, man, you know, like, I don't want that to happen, right? Uh, but again, Everything's going to be perfectly how God wants it to be. You're not going to be sad because you're there, and I pray that we're all there with our spouses, but it's not going to be in this relationship that we have right now. Uh, it's going to be different, whatever that looks like. Okay, So, um, you know, we are the bride, right? All of us as the church is the bride, and, and the groom is Christ, and that's the relationship. So we're with him. We're all with him in, in, a, in a different relationship than I think we can fathom. fathom yeah. you know? So, uh, And this is the closest relationship, though, we have, to help us understand that, right? The, the oneness, the unity, the closeness, the, the glorious, awesome thing that marriage is and can be and is to be is the picture that it gives us of that. And how awesome is that, right? That's pretty awesome. So in this, I just have a couple thoughts. We only got a couple minutes um, to say it now says, there's so much here that I think, you know, we get this, teaching and we hear things through sermons or teachings over the years of being saved and and it as we mature we start to kind of put the pieces in the right places of the puzzle um so when you hear people say like oh there's streets of gold in heaven and there's this and that and no more tears and no more pain and when does it say that happens it says it happens right here okay we don't see streets of gold or any of that until the new heaven and new earth mm -hmm. so it doesn't appear that that is happening right now it will one day be, if that makes sense, okay? So in here, I would say it, it tells us no more death, no more sorrow, no more pain, no more crying. And that's not until, where are we at this? That's not to the point of after the millennial kingdom, after the second resurrection, and when the new heaven and new earth begins. That's significant mm -hmm. to me. Do you see where I'm going with that? Because that means up till that point, there is crying. And there is mourning. And there are these types of emotions going on. Mm -hmm. And I personally believe that's because look at what just happened. What just happened prior to verse 20, to chapter 21 and where we are going into new heaven and new earth. Mm -hmm. What just happened? The great white throne judgment and the second resurrection. Where all non-believers and believers are all there. And all non-believers are now judged according to what? Their deeds. And they are therefore condemned to hell for eternity. And we're all there mm -hmm. watching that happen. We're all there present to see loved ones, to see friends, to see family members, to see people who will be condemned because of their sin. So it makes sense to me to say after that happens, God will wipe away our tears and our sorrow no more mm -hmm. because it seems fitting that we should be sorrowful over anyone who is being condemned to hell for eternity. Does that make sense to you guys? And perhaps, perhaps that's a new thought to some of you. And it's not a new thought to me. And every time I think of it, it breaks me. Mm -hmm. Well, there's, there's martyrs in heaven that are still feeling, you know, maybe a little anger and angst and stuff. So there's emotion. And, Right, and don't get me wrong, I don't know exactly what it looks like. Because, again, I have a finite, puny little brain. And so I don't know what that looks like because I, I, don't, wanna, I don't want us to understand that the souls that are in heaven and have been there for thousands of years are sorry that they're there. That's by no means the picture that scriptures present to us. 
they're in the presence of our Lord. Yes? Mm-hmm. Are you with me? They're, they're in glory with God and, and in basking in his glory. And they're not sorry about that. Mm-hmm. Okay? But there is some something that points to me, you know, even the, in the um, Lazarus and the rich man, as Jesus tells about that, that they're talking across this chasm and that they remember, recall things from their life. So it seems to be that you will have those memories and remember some of those things. So it's not like the slate's just wiped clean. Or have regrets. Yeah, but I don't, that's what I mean. I don't think the regret and all those things, again, it's hard to say. To what degree is that? I don't think it's a very big degree because you're not going to be in heaven mourning over those things while you're in the presence of God. But I do believe that when this comes and this happens at the great white throne judgment, that there'll be room for that and that we will have that. And that's, I, I believe, the significance of, of after that, him saying, now all tears will be wiped away and there'll be no more mourning and, and no more pain and no more sorrow because now we're moving on to new heaven, new earth with God and all of eternity forever. Uh, I can't think of the scripture now. There was a scripture there where, where I don't remember who it was, but it was talking about um, someone asked to go tell their brother and their father. That's what yeah, I was just talking one. about. Yep. Yeah, yeah, Lazarus yeah. and the rich man. Yeah, and let, they say, let, let the dead bury the dead. Yes. And along those lines, basically. Yeah. But Lazarus isn't in heaven. Uh, yes, Lazarus the beggar was in heaven, and the rich man was in hell, and that's what I was talking right. about. They were mm-hmm. talking back and forth, and he said, you know, let him dip his finger in the and give me the water, go tell my brothers. Um, yeah, that whole scene was he could he had memories, you know, of his brothers and thinking of. Them. Well, that's what I meant by regrets, like w- wishing you had shared the gospel more or done something. It seems like that's the conversation that they were having. Like go back and you know the rich man obviously was having. Hmm. Yeah, and that's a good point to say. So this kind of brings us back into, which, which always is a good thing to do, but, you know, even what you just said, I think there's probably some thoughts to bring us back to a theological conclusion to say, will there be regret that you didn't do as much as you could to share the gospel with people? And so certainly I think we all fall short of that. But also in that, to remember that God is sovereign. And there won't be anyone who's going to be saved who did not get the gospel right. reached to them because God will have it happen. Mm-hmm. Um, so, again, it's reconciling placed. those yeah. two things in your brain, yeah. I, I understand, is difficult, but we know that that's the case. There's no one that is going to go to hell because I didn't do enough work to save right. them. Mm-hmm. However, it doesn't mean that I don't do everything in my, uh, in my strength to share the gospel with them as I know that's the way they're saved. Right? Understand? Mm-hmm. Both things. Yeah, both make, things. Yeah, both and. God, <laughs> I'm not off the hook and I don't stop telling them because I say, oh, God's got this. Mm-hmm. Nope. I'm told to, to obey God and do the things I'm called to do. But I know doing that, he's going to do what only he can do. Yeah. And we still get um, spoken to, judged as believers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's gift, right. And gifted. That's right. So there's still going to be accountability for mm-hmm. all the times yeah. I fell short and did terrible job. Yeah, yeah. I didn't realize it was God. the new heaven. I always thought it was the heaven that's right so that's kind of awakening is there something that says what heaven's like now oh sure the old testament scriptures new testament there's certainly talks of you know what what heaven is but we get we get a big description here of the new heaven mm-hmm. and the new earth and so most people would just Put come to this and say this yeah. is what heaven's like yeah and yes it is not yet it's not yet there will be streets of gold there will be tree of life there will be all that stuff and there is we we find out in hebrews and you know, that there is a tabernacle in heaven right now. And we saw the souls under the altar, you know, and all that stuff. That That's now. Uh, will those things be there in the new one? Yeah. I don't know. You know, we're going to see a description next next couple chapters here. This is God is the tabernacle, I think. Good. Well, we're done. we got 30 seconds, maybe. So thoughts, comments on uh, on that. We'll pick up there next week and certainly keep keep reading on it and keep studying on it. But... Any insight or input to, to those things? Certainly certainly great things as we look at, you know, seeing our, our eternal home and that we will be forever with God um, is an awesome thing. Does it say, yes, sir. Do you see it anywhere like um, those who are in heaven now, you know, to say, you know, Grandpa's looking down on us, you know, and Grandpa sees us. And, right. You know, like, I know that lends to the whole... Memories and thoughts and sorrow right. and happiness and you know I know it's not an easy 
answer. But you got ten seconds. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> to answer that. <laughs> we usually go over two, three minutes anyway. So I, I start that ten second countdown um, to get us moving. But um, yeah, no, I, I do think what you said. I think you answered your own question. You know, I, I think we see in in that example that that uh, Adam and I were just talking about um, that there does seem to be some type of memories uh, in, in understanding that, you know, but we know a couple things. We don't rely on those things. We don't pray to those people. You know, we don't pray to our grandpa who's in heaven to ask him to watch over us to do all those things, right? We understand um, they're, they're, they were sinners just like us, including Mary, you know, and, and whoever else the Roman Catholics pray to and other religions. Um, so we know that that's, that's not the case. Um, you know, are they are they watching and, and watching what's happening in, in our lives with some great um, hope or aspirations or something? I would say no. I would say they're in the presence of God and they're much too tied up in Him and too busy for that. Uh, does it mean that they're not there uh, praying that we would be saved, you know, and hoping and, and asking that we would? And, and so certainly I could see those types of, of things, but um, knowing that that's God's, God's work and, and that they're, they're with Him. Um, I don't think anyone's going to be, you know, missing me so badly when they're in the presence of God that it's going to ruin their day, right? They're with God for all of eternity. Yeah. And I wonder if, if they were in the other place, if they would be praying for their loved ones to, mm. you know, for God to save them so that they don't end up here. Right. Well, the rich man was. Which we that's, saw that. Yeah, that's right. Was, in that yeah, instance, yeah. we see yeah. exactly that. Yeah. Yeah. So... Yeah, so you can see, to some degree, right, we understand there's there's always going to be emotions involved. Uh, he's not wiping away the emotional slate to say, you're robots and you're doing this. Uh, there's always going to be emotion, right, and a will and a being there. We are, we are eternal beings, right, with this body. We're not a body with a soul. We're a soul with a body. We're an eternal living being that God has created us in his image, and that's one of the things that's in his image, that we are eternal beings, um, you know, so it, it is going to be emotional and spiritual, you know, all those, even physical, right? We're going to have new physical bodies. So, yeah, there's, and there's going to see, we're going to see water and fruits and trees. Like, it's still going to be physical and emotional and all those things, just different. You know, somehow that's all we can really say is it's just, it's just not the same. It's just different and not the same. <laughs> yeah. But I think awesome and beautiful and better. All right, well, let's close. Scott, would you pray for us? Sure. Thanks, Brett. <clears throat> Father God, thank you for this time you've given us, and um, thank you for the revelation that you've put in our, on our hearts and on our minds this morning, Lord. Thank you for just clarifying with your good book, the Bible, that um, you know exactly what it is that, uh, that you intend for us and the way that you've laid it out for us, Lord, and helping us. Thank you for helping us to understand that, Lord. Thank you for putting it on Craig's heart to help us and to lead us through it. Lord, we, uh, we ask that you just give us a great time of uh, rejoicing and, and uh, worshiping you mm -hmm. this after, this, uh, as we move forward with our church service, Lord, and that, um, that if there were those there that, that have not heard the gospel, mm -hmm. that you would let them hear it today and yep. that you would save them and, and um, pull them into the fold with us, Lord, and help us to love on them and, and to carry them on and to spread your gospel like we, we've been instructed to do, Lord. Just help us to do that as we go into our week and into our days and always just to um, glorify you, Lord, and, and, um, and just spread the, the great news of the gospel everywhere we go, Lord. Yep. We just thank you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, brother.